اهلا وسهلا في برنامج داخل شيكاغو هذا المد... هذا البرنامج يتحدث عن الاشياء التي تحدث في مدارس شيكاغو Welcome to Inside CPS. I'm your host Jessica Perez. Today's episode has an international flair with students from two CPS high schools traveling thousands of miles for an academic competition. We'll also show you high school students getting a jump start on their careers and introduce you to Heather Hampton, whose fifth grade science class recently made their television debut on WTTW. But first, here's the latest in CPS news. Thank you to the thousands of CPS families who participated in parent-teacher conferences earlier this month. Parents, remember to check out the district's three new parent university sites at chicagocityoflearning.org backslash parentuniversity. Thanks to One Summer Chicago, over 24,000 jobs and internships will be available to Chicago's youth this year. Students can apply now at onesummerchicago.org. Preschool families, remember that the application deadline for Chicago Ready to Learn, the district's school-based early childhood education programs, is May 1st, 2015. Visit www.cps.edu backslash ready to learn to download your application today. Finally, congratulations to CPS alum Jaleel Okafor, who helped lead the Duke University Blue Devils to the 2015 NCAA Men's Basketball Championship, and to the Phoenix Military Academy, which recently received the Students in Action Award for their outstanding commitment to service and volunteerism on Chicago's near west side. It's hard to say what's most impressive about this next group of students, that they traveled to Doha, Qatar for a debate competition, or that the entire event was conducted in Arabic. Through Arabic, because of its importance globally, students in Chicago can have such an unmeasurable influence on their own community. My name is Tyler Blackwell, and I am the executive director of the Center for Arabic Language and Culture. Our mission is basically to provide existing Arabic programs at the K through 12 level for teachers and students. We know that there is a great deal of federal support for students and young adults as they go into Arabic language, from flagship programs at universities to overseas jobs, and we just want to make certain that our students have opportunities when they leave here. Arabic is a really important language to learn because a big portion of the population of the world speaks it. It's very important because a lot of the world's uh, political issues are occurring in the Arabic world. By studying Arabic and studying the culture and exchange information or do video conferences with the students from the Arab world, this is will help our students to understand more what happened in the Middle East and understand more the Arabic culture in the Middle East. We created a partnership with the Qatar Debate Center and we were able to get a uh, team from Limbloom basically to represent America at this huge international debate tournament. The tournament was for Arabic speaking countries for the most part. We were the only team that had students that had only taken Arabic for three years tops. We actually have three debates. So the first one, I was really nervous. Like, I'm like, I have no idea what to expect when I'm going into this. And then as we did the, the last two, I got better and better after each one. My experience was, uh, I'd say life changing because it really gave me another push to want to study abroad. And I think going outside of the country and experiencing other people and cultures gives you a better appreciation for other people. And this is what the center is all about, is helping to provide these opportunities for students that are unique once in a lifetime opportunities to where they can grow personally, but they can also build bridges with people from all over the world. Having Arabic has impacted the Lynn Bloom community partially by just opening up the world. I mean, I think that is what education does, right? It is supposed to show students opportunities, give them the skills to take those opportunities and run with them. And, and so we're providing students opportunities they would not otherwise have. I just think we're expanding students' world. Shukran lil mushahida, masalama. Thanks for watching. Bye. Today's teacher feature highlights Heather Hampton, a science teacher whose creativity helped give students at Heffernan Elementary the opportunity of a lifetime. 
My name is Dr. Heather Hampton. I teach at Heffron Elementary School. I've been here for two years and I've taught for Chicago Public Schools for a total of 11 years. Divide our bottle into Muchi Kalala is a kid-friendly science TV show and we were on the episode for tornadoes and what you see are two students that are trying to find the truth about different science topics. Gotta get to the bottom of this, but how? We gonna go chase tornadoes. Wichikulala was a good activity because I learned a lot of stuff. They created tornadoes. So cool. But no hoagies or grabinators in that experiment. Or skunks. <laughs> It was an exciting experience, and I want to say so because not only were we able to have a full production crew in Heffron, the students were able to participate in many hands-on activities, and then we were able to walk down the red carpet and see our premiere of our episode and sit in front row seats. It was an amazing experience. Thanks for testing our discoveries. And thanks for being part of the Muchi Kalala Detectives Club. A rigorous science program is absolutely important, and it's important because Students need to understand how to have collaborative conversations with each other. They have to understand how to use evidence as a basis for their arguments. They need to know how to use their reasoning within the world. I think science is important because it's like we do it all day, every day, so it's like it's like an important role in our lives. I allow them to take or to have the full autonomy to create and to develop on their own. My students research and then they develop a plan within their groups. They create their own types of experiments and then they facilitate that learning by actually conducting those experiments. Dr. Hampton is fabulous. She's what we call a super teacher. She makes sure that her children are interested in whatever it is she's teaching by making the lessons exciting, by having them be project-based, hands-on. She really involves them. She believes in small group instruction, so she knows for sure what her children know and what they need. We just have a lot of fun when I allow the students to determine their learning style and so that's my best part just their engagement in science. Grandpa had told the story about the grabinators. Hoagies and grabinators. Grabinators and hoagies they skunks. With pathways in healthcare, hospitality, technology, and much more, our district's career and technical education programs make building career skills the norm at CPS. CTE stands for Career and Technical Education, and CTE is one way that the district is preparing our students for success in tomorrow's economy. So not only does CTE include the academic course of study that every other high school student goes through, but it also includes a set of technical courses where students get technical skills as well as employability skills. Another huge component of CTE is our work-based learning opportunities. Students get on-the-job experience, they get opportunities to interface with um, corporate partners as well as outside industry. CPS currently has over 40 different types of programs that span 12 different industry clusters. We have everything from web design to broadcast technology, healthcare to personal care services. One of the popular programs is called Culinary Arts, where we prepare students for careers in the restaurant industry. They learn everything from basic knife skills to cooking an elaborate meal, and they compete in different competitions as well. What we're finding is that our students, on average, outpace the district average in terms of graduation rates as well as college enrollment rates. Our students are leaving high school not only you know with a solid academic course of study, but they're leaving high school with um, knowing their interests and having a solid post-secondary plan. Currently, we have 17,000 students across 60 different high schools that are enrolled in CTE. And that's all for this episode of Inside CPS. Remember to send your story ideas and feedback to spotlight at cps.edu. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.